Sergio Perez currently leads the table for drivers who have changed teams or joined newly in 2021, including the three rookies. Perez is followed by Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz, while Sebastian Vettel is the only experienced driver not to have scored a point in 2021 so far. It's been a rough start for many of these drivers, who changed teams or started racing in Formula 1 this year, and all of them are behind their teammates except for Mick Schumacher. So in this video, we take a look at the year so far and which of these driver changes or additions may be the right or the wrong choice from the team's point of view. Also, do subscribe if you haven't already as we are racing towards the 1000 mark. So, winning a world championship with McLaren is the ultimate goal for Daniel Ricciardo, although it certainly won't be this year. But the rule changes in 2022 is the ultimate opportunity for McLaren and Ricciardo to take advantage of. The team has made the right progression from a miserable 9th place in 2017. McLaren has gradually evolved as a team capable of scoring podiums on merit. So back to Ricardo, he has outqualified Lando Norris in the first two races, but failed to get out of Q1 in Portugal, which was a surprise, as it was his worst qualifying performance since the Japanese Grand Prix in 2019. However, Daniel made a comeback in the race, running long in the first stint and finishing 9th in the race. Ricardo has failed to hit the ground running at McLaren and so far has been outperformed by his younger teammate Lando Norris and he trails Lando by 21 points. But one of Daniel's greatest strengths is his positive attitude as he accepts the current situation and working towards integrating with the new car and the new team. The modern F1 cars are complex and most drivers are facing similar challenges in adapting to the new machinery. Ricardo has the experience and the talent to make a comeback shot in terms of signing Ricardo, I think it's the right choice by McLaren as it's just a matter of few races for Daniel to consistently perform. So Carlos Sainz has beaten Leclerc in Portugal qualifying. It's the first time Sainz has beaten his teammate in either a qualifying or a race. And according to Sainz, a top 5 or a top 6 result was possible with a decent race execution and the pace he had shown all weekend. But Sainz ended up pointless for the first time this season. Sainz has made errors in the past but scored 8th and 5th place scoring 14 points so far, just 14 points behind his teammate Charles Leclerc. Qualifying ahead of Leclerc is a very encouraging step for Sainz as he continues his learning curve with the SF21. So far Sainz has been the most convincing of all the drivers who changed teams and he's confident to gradually move into a consistent rhythm with the Ferrari car as the season moves to more familiar racetracks. With Ricardo and Norris at McLaren and Leclerc and Sainz at Ferrari, the battle for the third place will intensify as we progress through the races and definitely the one to watch out for. Of course, Ferrari need to make the right strategy calls to maximize their results. We have seen several mistakes in the past from Ferrari strategists. Overall, Sainz is the right move for Ferrari and they could become a strong team if they can manage their drivers and the strategy calls. Nikita Mazepin has drawn a ton of attention from all over even before the start of the season, mostly for the wrong reasons. Starting his first ever Formula 1 Grand Prix weekend at Bahrain, all eyes were on him to scrutinize his every move. Mazepin did not disappoint his critics as he did spin after spin after spin. And during qualifying after overtaking several other drivers to start his hot lap, Mazepin spun even before reaching the first corner, destroying the laps of everyone behind including Sebastian Vettel. And on the race day, he ended his F1 debut in just two corners. In doing so, Mazepin had the shortest Formula 1 debut for a driver in 19 years and earning him the title Mazepin, consolidating the argument that Mazepin's entry to Formula 1 is not the right choice. He already angered many fellow drivers on the grid and not able to come in terms with his car. Mazepin has been convincingly beaten by his teammate Mick Schumacher 6-0 in terms of both qualifying and the races so far. Haas F1 team surely needed the money, but not the driver it deserved. So this certainly is a wrong choice. Mick Schumacher did make some rookie mistakes, but his high point of the season so far has come at Portimao as he was able to split the Williams and a Haas car is able to finish ahead of another team for the first time this season. Of course, George was struggling to handle his car and Latifi made a mistake, but even then, Mick was at the right place to keep up the pressure and take advantage. In this much competitive field, scoring even a single point in this year's Haas may be beyond Schumacher's reach, but his focus should be to consistently improve with each race, get as much experience as possible and stay ahead of his 
his teammate Nikita Mazepin because Mick Schumacher will ultimately move to a faster team if he is able to show the continuous improvement so Mick is certainly a right move. After a spectacular debut at Bahrain, Yuki Tsunoda slipped into rookie mistake mode at Imola. He even struggled at Portimao on a track he never raced before. But Tsunoda is a refreshing character on the grid and undeniably one of the most exciting prospects in recent times. At Imola, he lost control of his car at Varianti Alta on his first flying lap and crashed into the barrier, causing extensive damage to the rear of his car. In the race, Sonora started at the back of the field but recovered to 12th in the end. He could have actually finished in the points if not for the spin while trying to overtake Lewis Hamilton. How is Sonora doing compared to his much experienced teammate Pierre Gasly? While Gasly leads 3-0 in qualifying, Sonora managed to finish ahead of his teammate in Bahrain. Heading into the season, Alpha Tauri looked capable to challenge for best of the rest title. But in the three races so far, the team's results have failed to live up to such a hype as they scored just 9 points and lies even behind Alpine. In the upcoming races, we might see the rise of Aston Martin and if AlphaTauri wants to achieve its target of a 5th place, they will need Tsunoda to score points on a regular basis. In terms of his ability, there is no doubt that he can come up the learning curve sooner than the other two rookies. Although it's a Honda-backed move to fast track Tsunoda's debut in Formula 1, AlphaTauri's decision to place him in one of their cars is absolutely the right one for the future. Portimao has been a great comeback for Alpine and Fernando Alonso while qualifying was disappointing. In the race, we saw Alonso in an aggressive style to claim 8th place. He has overtaken a McLaren and a Ferrari in the process of reaching 8th place, which shows Alpine are getting closer. He finished just one second behind his teammate Esteban Ocon, who started 6th on the grid. Things look to be on the rise for Alpine, however, they need to continue the improvements to be able to steal points from McLaren, Ferrari or even Alfa Tauri. While there is no doubt that Alonso is a world-class driver and he will ensure decent performances while he's at the team. Considering Alpine needs a driver who can lead them into the new era and beyond, Alonso may be a wrong choice in the long term. If Alpine developed the car around Alonso and replaces him with another driver after his current two-year deal, they may need to start all over again. As we have seen this year, getting used to a new car has been a mighty challenge even for the most experienced drivers. But I guess Renault did not have other reasonable options as the junior drivers Guan Yu Zhou and Christian Lungard weren't ready to step up to Formula 1 yet. Red Bull's second seat has been one of the most brutal on its drivers, with several of them come and gone. And Sergio Perez's one-year time at Red Bull is like walking a tight rope. Even a couple of underperformances will build up the pressure on the driver, which will eventually leave the drivers trying hard and end up making even more mistakes. This is what we have seen from Kvyat, Gasly and Alex Albon. Perez's season so far has been a mix of brilliance and errors. Bahrain saw a lack of qualifying pace, but immediately bounced back at Imola with his first ever front row start. While the races have been the opposite, as a brilliant comeback drive in Bahrain was followed by a forgettable error-filled Sunday afternoon at Imola. Potimao was the first sign that Perez is settling down into the car, as he was able to be consistent in both qualifying and the race. We should start seeing Perez getting more involved in the battles at the front and is a right choice by Red Bull. If anyone can break the second driver curse at Red Bull, it's Sergio Perez. Sebastian Vettel's 2021 campaign did not start well. In reality, the only major highlight of his campaign is making it to Q3 at Portimao after missing out in the last 15 races, which eventually did not turn into a points finish. And Vettel failed to score a point in the first three races, and he lies only above the Williams and the Haas drivers. In the last two races, although Sebastian Vettel qualified in some reasonable midfield positions, instead of making the most of it and progressing in the race, he ended up dropping places. And this is not surprising as it has been Vettel's trend in the recent years. While we could see him deliver a spark on the odd occasion, it has almost become the new normal that Vettel is not in Q3 or in the points. So at least from what we have seen so far, Vettel has been the wrong choice for Aston Martin. I hope you enjoyed, stay safe and I'll meet you in the next one.